years yeah. every year to uh, significant people in our club, and sometimes to significant people outside our club. Uh, this year, the, both of the recipients are in the, the club. But um, this year is the 19th MUS show. We've been at this for 19 years. And for better and for worse, uh, I've been uh, leading the effort for the past 14 of those years. So, uh, <laughs> and we try to make it a little better, or at least a little different, whether it's better or not, it's up to your judgment, uh, every year. So, um, I'd like to, first of all, recognize our show sponsors, and uh, along with them also, first of all, the exhibitors. Would all the exhibitors who pay to, uh, to rent a table from us this year, please stand. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All forgotten back there. Uh, yeah, exactly. And uh, also we had another exhibitor here who was kind of an unintentional exhibitor because he was in there with me. Uh, but he's also a, a, a very special guest this year, although he doesn't know that. Um, Bob Burns, Kodiak. Uh, yeah. <laughs> is with us this year, and uh, he uh, has a lot of hardware, uh, actually about probably only half of it left. I was going to say, not much anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that he can, that, and you can, you can also, you can purchase for uh, very, you know, screen of deal rates, uh, part of his collection tomorrow, and it'll still be available. Uh, he's exhibiting next to me, and I have magazines for sale. So everybody who likes Amiga magazines, I'd be surprised to find how many of you do. Uh, I thought it was just my affliction, uh, and my wife is convinced, convinced that it is an affliction. So, uh, but these are the duplicates that I have in my collection. So uh, the first box has been out on the table all day. There are three more boxes to sell, so please come by. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so. Uh, the, uh, the people I'd, I'd also like to recognize individually are our sponsors for this year. And first of all, first and foremost, uh, well, the sponsor who has kept our community going uh, over the last uh, however many years it's been, I've lost track, uh, is um, AEM Corporation, uh, or AEM Limited, sorry, uh, represented by Trevor Dickinson, the principal of the <laughs> and this year it has a computer on it. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> it's not a couple of bags of PCs. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Good um, Our next uh, sponsor, and these are in no particular order, uh, is um, Matthew Lima with Amiga Kent, who is also <laughs> Classic supplies and now all the new computers that are coming out. Thank you very much. You know, it takes a lot of time, effort, energy, and most of all, money uh, to get to keep this going. Uh, the Amiga users of Calgary uh, have sponsored just about every year in the past, what, six, seven, eight years? I don't know, I forgot. Uh, it's just a regular part now. I don't know what, you, what I'd do if you didn't. So uh, please come forward and accept. Uh, So these, these gentlemen uh, come and uh, spend tons of money to get here, and then they spend tons of money when they get here. Uh, so and I'd also like to present you with uh, the other sponsorship uh, as a representative of Hyperion. Yes, and we, we have already thanked Hyperion by email, uh, but uh, we're going to thank you in person, Steve. Because without you, I'm not sure that you'd be sponsoring. Um, so, um, and now we have two club awards that we give every year. One for technical contributions to our club, the, uh, the outstanding technician uh, in our, our club uh, this year is a, a guy who's been with Sacramento Amiga Computer Club for over 25 years and uh, came to us from a club in Los Angeles 
uh, where he was part of a user group down there. He's become very active in beta testing for the X5000 and become uh, much more heavily involved in the club. Um, he helps the other two of us, uh, myself and Bill Clay, with uh, file maintenance and uh, producing ISO CDs. So uh, he's really been a, a very uh, inspirational member for us as well. So uh, and he's, he's got, fortunately got some time to do all of this. Um, he's also uh, very organizationally oriented. He was uh, one of the original founding members of AMI West Committee in 1998 and uh, has been interested in the show ever since. Uh, and uh, his name is Michael Salcedo. Award the John Zacharias Award. John Zacharias was a past president of our club, uh, and uh, he uh, unfortunately has uh, uh, deceased, and uh, so we have named this award after him. John was a very uh, technically oriented guy himself. He was a programmer for the state of California, uh, did custom programming for them in very various capacities. Uh, so, and he really loved him. Uh, he also has written several Amiga programs that I understand are still extant on uh, Eminet and uh, still work very well on the platforms that we use. So we'll present this to Michael a little bit later tomorrow. Last year we had a, a very uh, sad event for us as a club. Uh, we uh, lost a very significant member of our, uh, of our community, Dan Klosko. And, um, in the past, we have awarded another award called the, the uh, Ken Barton Award, named after a past secretary of the club who, also, who managed the finances and uh, did a whole lot of other stuff. Uh, and this year, we have decided to uh, rename that award to the Dan Klosko Memorial Award. Um, and this evening, we have two of his family members, his wife, Cynthia, and his daughter, Ginger, uh, with us. And uh, we thank you for coming. Um, Dan was kind of like the firmware that initialized everything in the club, you know? <laughs> uh, he was uh, always active, always doing all kinds of things for the club, uh, and uh, he would say, yeah, I'll do that, uh, when we asked, and he never turned us down. Very uh, knowledgeable about uh, many different computer pro program platforms. I learned last summer while we were riding back and forth to the Amiga 30 preparation sessions, that he had actually been educated as a programmer. I didn't know that before then. So he had a pretty deep knowledge of, uh, of uh, platforms. And he was also a great guy. Uh, so uh, that's why we have renamed our award for this year, uh, and succeeding years as well, uh, to the Dan Klosko Memorial Award. This year's recipient is uh, somebody who's been very active in our club, and this is an organizational award uh, for somebody who really is, you know, always there, very steady, very helpful, uh, you know, makes a significant contribution to the details of the club, because there are tons of them. Uh, even in a, a, an event like this, you know, there are lots of details that uh, nobody ever sees, and uh, we need help with that. And uh, our uh, recipient this year has been extremely helpful in that regard, and has been uh, helpful for many, many years. In fact, our recipient this year is the sole remaining original member of the Sacramento Amiga Computer Club, Kay Smith. Thank you. You're welcome. It's nice to be here. Yes, it is very nice to be here. <laughs> discussion, you are, are doubtless aware that Hyperion's uh, little phrase that they used to advertise with is, remember when computing was fun, right? You've seen that all over their packaging, all over their websites, you know, that's what they say. And so this year we thought we'd do a little takeoff in that and say, remember why computing with the Amiga was and is fun. So I'd like to invite our panel participants, which are Trevor Dickinson and Steve Soley, and L.D. Stevens, wherever he is, uh, and uh, Bill Borsari, up to the front. Please bring your chairs, gentlemen. So let's start with L.D. Uh, and um, so we're going to ask you, L.D., to tell people you know, what you do 
Uh, we'll limit it. If it turns green, it's okay. <coughs> No, I can't be right. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's cold training. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, I, it's pretty hot. It is pretty hot. Just wait as you turn down the gain a little bit there. No, he can do that. They, they like feet. <laughs> Hi, my name is Aldi Stevens. Um, I joined the Amiga community in 2009. Um, what are you doing, Andrew? What do you want me to talk about? Just to, you know, what you do every day and. Uh, and you know, just a little background, a bit of oh, sure. Um I've been a computer enthusiast since I was uh, a little, little one, starting with the Commodore 64 and going on with plenty of Macs and other 16-bit machines. And the interesting thing is that the Amiga was number one of them, um, for whatever reason. Um, I, I worked for um, IBM as a uh, processor developer, and a few years ago, I got so bored with all the PCs and things that I was dealing with, I wanted to try something different. And I was amazed to discover that the Amiga, the one platform that I never got to try when I was a kid, was still around. So I bought a Sam. And it's been great ever since. Okay, cool. Let's mute that. Just mute it. There you go. Okay. So, Steve. Yes. Um, Steven Soli. Been around forever. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, started with Big 20 and moved my way up. How old were you? Hmm. Oh, <laughs> I don't remember. Ten. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Okay. Like good. Good. <laughs> Very hungry. So you see a lot of change. Oh, see the light. Um, <laughs> uh, what do I do all day? I brush my teeth. Um, well, I, I'm mostly a uh, firmware programmer by day. And, <laughs> Amiga programmer by night. Um, also worked in telecom forever, and uh, now I'm in oil. So all things. Okay. Cool. So, Mr. Dickens. Thank you. Man. Sure. Excuse me. Trevor Higginson. Um, God, it's a long time ago when I started. Um, I started with a, actually an HP 9820. Ah, uh, you see, an HP 9830. Deck PP 1103. Oh, the 03. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and then the PP 1123. 11, 23. Oh, that, that was much later. <laughs> but my first home computer was a Commodore yeah. 4032. Uh, 1988. Sorry. 80. 80. No. 78. <laughs> 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 so, Commodore Pet, Commodore 64, you'll see a trend here. Commodore 128, Commodore Amiga 2000, Commodore Amiga 3000, Commodore Amiga 4000, uh, SCOM, PC, Gateway PC, next generation of Amigas. Okay. My name is Bill Morsari. Um, I had the honor of video chatting with Trevor during the uh, Amiga 30th and got to see past him in his house. We, we do not have the time to have him list all of the machines. <laughs> right. It's, uh, it's quite impressive. So my first, com my, first, my first computer was an iPhone, uh, and then I got an iPad. Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, TRS-80, and then my brother gave me a uh, Amiga 500 for my birthday, and that's when the curse started. Good right. Yeah, very nice of it, the, the story about that 500 is it was a uh, Amiga 500 that was used for FCC frequency testing. So when he got it, it was like a box, and all the chips were there. So he got it cheap, and just plugged in all the chips. And then when he got a 2000, he, he handed down a... Uh, Amiga 500, and he gave me a copy of uh, Stunt Car Racer, mm -hmm. and I still have the, uh, the box for that, which is pretty scary. <laughs> okay, so we can see we have a pretty wide range of experience here. Uh, and that was the other reason why you were really chosen, uh, was not because you just said yes, but because your experience covers a lot, a, quite a wide range. So, 
Now we're going to probably get to, you know, why it is that after all these years and all this experience and all of the things that you do in industry, even with, you know, computer technology, uh, why are you so very, very interested in Amiga as a developing platform? I know Bob and I have been talking here, and he's been kind of shocked. That, uh, that what they started, you know, 31 years ago, was still alive, and not only alive, but, but really going. Uh, and uh, so, why, why do you use that and continue to be involved? Anybody can answer. So, what's the what, what, what's one of the whys? Because it's, <laughs> because it's fun. Oh my! God. That's still turn up. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I'm loud enough anyway. It's, 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 yeah. Just a little bell. It's, 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 it's all good. Um, anyway, the reason why is it's fun. So one of the things that I do on a regular basis, I'm, uh, I actually work uh, on uh, IBM Z systems, big honking mainframes. You know, we use like the credit card, all that fun stuff. And and while it is true that I love sitting around and editing Parm Life members and ISPF, and I love Xedit and VM, it's just not really all that fun. <laughs> and Solaris isn't all that fun. And AIX isn't all that fun. And Linux isn't all that fun. And Mac OS X isn't all that fun. And Windows is really not fun. And the truth is, is that when I was a kid, right, I would just run home because I wanted to use that 64. Or I wanted to use that Mac Classic. I didn't know what I was going to do. It was just brilliant, right? It was every single day you discovered something new and something delightful. And I don't think anybody has ever said anything remotely like that about a Lenovo ThinkPad running SUSE. <laughs> <laughs> so, so after working with computers literally all day, with these next gen Amigas, I actually get to come home and use something that I actually enjoy using, which really hasn't happened for me since the early 90s. I, I can't tell you why it's fun. I mean, I, I love the fact that everything is scriptable. Um, I love the quirks of the workbench. I love the fact that uh, the, uh, the shell is so English-like. Uh, I, I love all of the bizarre non-standard GUIs that come with all these old programs. Uh, I, it makes absolutely no objective sense, but it is absolutely brilliant to sit down at this thing and tinker with it and play with it. My wife thinks I'm nuts and continues to do so as the collection grows, but um, <laughs> I don't really have a reason why. It's just really, really enjoyable. And uh, Robert and to the rest of the team members who might be listening or whatever, my hat's off to you guys. That you all created something absolutely magnificent. So thank you very much. Yes. 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 Wow. Well, yeah. All of that. It's <laughs> 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 not uh, uh, I hit my head. <laughs> 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 no, I, I, I still like uh, tinkering with the Amigas because they're they're so different from um, all the usual stuff at work, you know, Macs, Windows, the usual stuff, HP UX. So. <laughs> happened? You tinkered. No, I used to play with that. Another job, and all the usual custom stuff. Um, now, nowadays, I just uh, enjoy the challenge, and. Um, the fact that uh, you know other platforms have kind of moved on and uh, left us behind on, in many cases, uh, I enjoy the challenge of catching up. <laughs> so they get a feature. Oh, I can put that in there too, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a little different from the the birth where they were way ahead. Yes. Yeah, but uh, in some ways we're ahead here and there. But, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I really enjoyed that. And I um, also have a copy of the source code, which is really cool. Too. <laughs> <laughs> the whole Amigo is right there. <laughs> which, is, which is neat. Um, I don't remember what, uh, what Mr. Kodiak worked on, but uh, I could have sworn I saw some of your code in there somewhere. <laughs> Wasn't it a dissembler? Yeah. Yeah, okay, that was my. Yeah, you never worked in C? Uh, I don't think, yeah, no. Or maybe it was rewritten by uh, oh, Michael I did, I, I, did, I did some stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, okay. The, the first C compilers were not, they wouldn't fit in the space we had if we'd written it in C. Yeah, it would not fit. No. <laughs> yeah, which was 256K, right? Only if you had the, the add-on. How big was the Kickstarter on for the first? 
To build on what, what Trevor was saying, the, the community is a strong part of it. Um, having done a couple of Amiga shows in the last few years, uh, meeting the, being around with the same folks, and even going to Amiga user groups <coughs> randomly. I went to Florida one one time, and it's a self-selected community of people who are curious and intelligent and interested in expanding the horizons. And the Amiga has always been very approachable as a piece of technology. Um, once you get past that first sort of hurdle and start looking under the hood, like how does this thing tick, it, it becomes very obvious very quickly how it works. The devs directory, the libraries directory, uh, the C directory, it's all very, very, very cleanly laid out. And if you've worked with Windows or even Linux, and you go to like the Etsy directory, and it's just like someone vomited a bunch of files, <laughs> and you're like, okay, I'm on Ubuntu, and that file's in Etsy, and then on a CentOS, it's in this other directory, and like the structure's a little different, and all this little crazy craziness. And it's not that it doesn't have its fun lizards too, but it tends to be much more uh, in line, much simpler, uh, just to sort of rock. Like I understand how this goes. Um, it's much easier to pick up programming for the system. Um, although, I imagine there are today easier ways of producing code. Um, the Amiga is a much simpler system to actually do something under the hood. Uh, I wrote a screen blanker, um, mainly because I, I wanted to, just to learn C and have fun with it. I took example code, asked a bunch of questions to people, like how does this work, how does that work. Uh, tried some things that failed, compositing this one. Um, it, was a, it was a great experience. And the Amiga just opened that up, along with all the other stuff, like I did views and Kid playing with this was really was really great, but um, that approachability, and then finding other people that are like yeah yeah this is the coolest thing ever done, and we we agree and like, cool you agree with me. <laughs> I mean I got a British car and I'll try it, and I'll find a lot of people like yeah that, that's a lot of fun. I'm like yeah just, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know we're here and it's a uh, it's fantastic. Uh, I think the range of reasons that you all cited has been, you know, kind of intriguing as well, because here we are in a, in a community of people that comes together from very diverse backgrounds and for very diverse reasons. But the common point of contact, you know, gives us not only something to talk about, but also uh, a way to address, you know, even things that we want to do or would like to do. Uh, I know myself, the reason why I use with a computer, I should say. Um, 
the reason why I stumbled onto the Amiga was because I was looking for a, uh, another computer. Uh, I was in graduate school at the time, and my, one of my professors absolutely refused to uh, accept the papers I was turning in on the other computer, which happened to be a Commodore Plus 4. Uh, he didn't like the way the printer printed. I uh, didn't like the way the footnoting worked. And he said, if you turn in another one of these, you're going to fail. So uh, I went looking for a computer. And the first store I walked into, there was the Amiga. I thought, what's this? Because all day long, uh, at the same school that I attended, I also was a, you know, a, a, work, a faculty secretary there. And so uh, I was using you know, early PC equipment as well, which was extremely frustrating. Uh, and I spent more time with learning how the computer was supposed to work than I did working. Supposed to work. Supposed to work, yes. Uh, so when I saw this thing, I thought, well, you know, it's got color and sound. And, you know, all those things that my PC didn't have in 1986. Uh, and so I, I, and it was not terribly expensive. So I bought one, took it home, and I didn't even have to read the manual. I just plugged it in, turned it on. I did know I had to stick the, the workbench disk in there. And I, I certainly did have to buy a second disk drive after a while. <laughs> <Just one. laughs> uh, and ProWrite. ProWrite was the first program I bought. Uh, and I mean, it was just a revelation. It was really cool. Because what I saw on the screen, I would actually get on a printout. Concept. You know, now we're all used to that now. But then it was, it was pretty revolutionary. Because before, you just had to kind of guess. Um, so then I would go back to work, and there would be the PC frustration again. So the PC frustration has stayed with me for the last 30 years, and so has my Amiga. You know, everything, every chance I get, everything I can do on my Amiga, which is just about everything these days, uh, I use it for that. And so it's a, it's a practical everyday thing for me. Uh, it's not something that I... Uh, sort of relegate to the back room, although I do have a back room that's full of them. Uh, and uh, it's kind of a subject of discussion you know, with my, my spouse, who's very long uh, But, uh, you know, she's, she understands. You know, she has things that she likes. Uh, and uh, it's, it's not as if it's, um, you know, the, the kiss of death to have a, a big Amiga co collection. But uh, it's, it's been just it's been very enjoyable. I think, I think there's a reason why the workbench uh, interface is called intuition. Uh, it's very creative. You can do just about anything you want to with it, as far as the computer screen is, is concerned. So those are my reasons why. And um, well, some of it. So going forward, you know, why would anybody else want to join the Amiga community? You know, how how does that work uh, going forward in, in your estimations? So why would someone want to talk? Well, um, you know, we're pretty accepting of different types of people. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a place where you can comfortably be yourself uh, for the most part. Um, the people who shouldn't be themselves know who they are. <laughs> I, I think that is a difficult, that's getting more and more difficult. Um, there are a few people who have been ensnared uh, more recently. I think LD, you're, you're not, you, rec you, did, you recently came yeah. to us. No, I never used an Amiga when I was younger. Yeah. Never used any of the 68K stuff. Right, and, and TJ, who wasn't able to make it, um, also was in that same situation where he knew about it as a kid and then came across it again and just got ensnared by that elegance, that simplicity. Uh, one, one thing you mentioned that was, was curious, or triggered a memory, is when you put the disk in the drive and how quickly it recognized the disk. And we take these things for absolute granted right now. That like, I press my button and, and my phone translates my text into another language for me instantly. And if it takes two extra seconds, I get upset and I want to throw it in the drive. But the, you, you think about the whole system that has to be done to achieve that, and it is amazing. The, the way the uh, the way the machine works, I think people can recognize that. Uh, I had a chance to go to Paris a couple years ago and stand in front of Starry Night, and I'm like, I think if I was walking down the street and there was an artist and I saw that, I would have bought it. Like, you look at this thing, and like, how can you not appreciate the masterfulness of this work, even if you knew nothing about art? 
it's just the richness of the colors and the whole thing. Like the guy who did that knew what he was doing. And when he, and you know anything about technology and you start using the Amiga, I think some of that comes across too. So, I think it definitely does. I mean, one of the things I've noticed since I've been coming here is the number of people who work in tech. Right? I mean, it, it shouldn't make any. It doesn't make any sense. We we, we all have these incredibly modern systems, back up immense amounts of cloud computing and all the rest of it. We've got guys here who work for LinkedIn, Google, IBM, Intel. We've got that from Apple. We've had people from uh, all over the place. And for some reason, this thing still has a tremendous amount of appeal, even though we have all these different things to play with. And it is. It's like a work of art. It genuinely, honestly, I think you really hit on something there. Uh, because the thing about art is, is that it doesn't make objective sense. But there is this wonderful subjective feeling that hits you. Uh, and it's just very pleasant. I seem poetic here, but you know, really like, for example, when, 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 well, back in the day, uh, during some of the first builds of AIX, you knew what everything was because there weren't that many components in the system. Today, there are so many conf files and so many directories and so many different objects. You don't know what anything is, but on an Amiga, you know what everything is. You look in the lines directory, you know exactly, because it's a script. You, you know where the handlers are. You know where all the devices are. And speaking about coding, one of the things I absolutely adore about this thing <coughs> is how fantastic exec is. I can do anything I want with message passing. And the I.O. is incredibly easy. I mean, all these we have all this very complex technology available to us. And yet, I still love tinkering with this thing. One other thing before I drop the subject. So um, about appeal. So we have like demo days at the office. I think I said this uh, in the previous times. I had this little SAM. And um, the, the first SAM I had has a PowerPC 440. And that thing dates back. Oh my God, if you think about it, that thing dates back to the original 400 series from the all <coughs> in the mid 90s. This thing is incredibly underpowered. And yet, this thing has a modern web browser and it can play relatively modern videos and all these different things. And everybody at the office is just absolutely staggered that you have this full desktop, it's not the speediest thing in the world, but that has all these modern capabilities um, that has the computing capacity of a graphic calculator. Seriously, right? The modern HP graphic calculators have about as much computing capacity as that little 440 does. This is absolutely staggering. So yeah, it, it's really cool. So tech people really appreciate this. Because it, it's amazing to see what you can do within the limitations. So elegance might be a way to describe it. Yeah, and simplicity, and uh, it just makes a lot of sense. Wouldn't exactly say that the GUI system makes a tremendous amount of sense per se. <laughs> But exact <laughs> makes a lot of sense, and, and uh, you know, it, it, it does. It, it does make a lot of sense. There's a so, lot of components of the system make a lot of sense. So, you guys remember uh, uh, Holger Proust wrote the TCP stack? Yeah. So, I was talking to him, I ran him a bunch of times, and he was saying that when he programmed, he, he didn't use Workbench. Just the shell. I guess. I don't know what he did. What else did he do? Well, it might be set or something. Oh, okay. He, he didn't use the workbench for his Amiga. Like it didn't boot. His Amiga did not boot to workbench <laughs> because he just knew what he was doing. So he, uh, you know, it's just your point about like the GUI. It's like that's the thing about the Amiga is like it is so well designed. You don't even need it. Like the the vast vast majority of people do use it. Yeah. But there's a few people out there that run super high res, four color, just to the shell and launch stuff. Well, I was just talking about the color analysis. Some of them. <laughs> <are> <laughs> So I think the QA is really, really very, very, it's, it's legitimately beautiful. Like all the work from Mason is on the icons. Oh, yeah. yeah. It really is pretty. You, you can still select quit <laughs> on Workbench. It still yes. works. Yes. No, uh, there's two programs running. Oh, no, it, it, it still worked. I guess I got it to work once. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Workbench code. But, actually, maybe this is a feature enhancement. When you quit, it should launch a shell. To do something. Yeah, <laughs> because when you quit, it just quits. It's like, okay, I'm going to do exactly no, what you told me right now, we're done. And the community like, what do I do? And, and this is the sense of interest of the community is, is, let's be honest, it's not quite as large as it once was. But in a way, it's almost an advantage because you want a feature, you know who to go pester. Right. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, right? I mean, you know everybody who does that. Uh, and also for people who are interested in developing uh, third-party software, you can become a big star really, really quickly. <laughs> you, you really can. Yeah. Uh, and we have some incredible people in the community. Uh, where is Dr. Tewari? Uh, 
Hans, for example. Uh, this, is the, this is a chap who wrote a driver for the uh, Southern Islands chipset from AMD, GPUs. And he beat the entirety of the X org uh, development team. I mean, you, you realize that? You, you got out the driver before the, uh, uh, the, the free software chats did in, in, in the Linux world. And it's incredible. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Interacting, you know, going back and forth to the AMD engineers over things, documentation. Is, we have some incredibly talented people in this tiny little community. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Big fish, small pond. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're, we're all sort of bloody minded as well, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it fits in well with the, 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 I mean, I can remember uh, back in, uh, it must have been 86, and uh, it must have been more than that, it was 89. So I had, I had my Mega for about a year. And I was uh, on a, a, a test uh, operation in an oil rig in Big Wells, Texas, uh, uh, in West Texas, Southwest Texas. And uh, to the lull in the testing, we, I was sitting down with my, my CEO of uh, uh, technical development and another bright guy, he's an electronics guy. And I was there as the, uh, the helper. I was actually fun in the business, but you know, it was all hands to the pump as a startup. You know? So uh, I was there cleaning things, mopping the floor, doing all the dirty front work. And we had a few beers that night and we talked about computers. And that's when Gateway week. So they all had their Gateway cow computers. And I was saying, of course, the Amiga is multimedia. <laughs> multimedia, that'll never catch on. <laughs> and, and of course, they were. The MS DOS systems at the time, or maybe I don't think it's Windows 3.11. But see, that 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 wonderment of you know multimedia, which was you know, captured so early on, I, mean, I wanted that to continue, and uh, I think that's uh, why I got obsessed. And when we talk about collections, I mean, of course, I'm joking. I think we have about 180, 190 computers, all Commodore, Commodore to the next generation of Amiga. You know, all the model, every single model you'd be thinking of, apart from the Amiga 3000, 200, if you've got one, go and spare in your collection. A 3000 what? 200. <laughs> 3200. No, 200. I thought you brought everything yeah, I had. Yeah, 200. Oh, all right, okay. So uh, why should anyone get involved with Amiga? Well, I think one, you said it, but you know, uh, you're talking to the people who develop the software, you're talking to the people who develop the hardware, you know, and you know, we're one step away from the hardware engineers, the software engineers, and you knew everyone in the community. And even though the community is worldwide, and the beta testers are worldwide, there's almost, I think when we did the X1000, we had 25 countries, beta testers. I, don't, I think it's about 20 with the X5000. Um, so it's a very international community, um, which spans the world. So, why should you do it? And it's different. You can be different, you don't have to follow the crowd. Work in, uh, well, I shouldn't say all, but we're exposed to, to other people's computer systems all the time. What I've noticed is that people don't change the background of their systems. Like, it's always like the, the, the picture of a mountain on their Macs. Or, or, you know, sometimes it's their kids, God bless. But like, if we go look at our Amiga, use, like if everyone took a shot of their Amiga workbench right now, we would get every single one would look completely different yeah, from the one before. And there's no, again, rational is not part of this conversation. <laughs> it's all for fun. Oh, yeah. 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 But the customability also is really, really helpful, right? So I know and edited it as well. These versions of us you can't really change a whole lot. But uh, you know, you're sitting there and you're having to manipulate properties in some obscure XML file that has absolutely no documentation. On Linux, you're dealing with TextConf files. On Windows, you're dealing with the registry, right? But this, the cool thing, the cool thing on the Amiga, is that uh, everything is immensely customizable, and that customability is hugely accessible, right? You go to the GUI, you go to the GUI preferences tool. You can change every. I mean, the coloration of borders and textures and things that I wouldn't even bother thinking about, but people do. I mean, they personalize it to an extraordinary degree, and uh, I think it's pretty cool. I, you know, so, some really ugly workbenches, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is my my view, right? It's got the the dock at the bottom. Every time like a new um, software comes out, like a new release, and I got to reinstall, I always put it somewhere else and make it totally different. Like it's got different features, so I just use them all differently every time. <laughs> just because it's one of the things. Sometimes I have three docks, sometimes it's one. Yep. You just 
No, it's insane, but it's fun to do. It's like Aeon's new clock, right? Yeah, you're one of the different right in right up in the yeah. corner. It's a little clock, right? How many skins is available? <laughs> oh. I mean, like tons of them, right? And you can still customize well, them. I, I, do, I, I like the Workbench Academy, which changes all the time. So it does. It's an amazing Workbench that just changes. You know? Intensely personal. Yeah. The, yeah. Clock, the, the clock is intensely personal. personal. The, the clock is too static. Yeah. Well, I, I don't have it for the time. Put in a feature request to develop over that. <laughs> okay, that's exactly. Yeah. 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 And, some, and some people in the community, uh, especially you know, developers, uh, perhaps software developers, you know, they, they don't even get paid to do this. You know, they, they work for free. Yeah. <laughs> I, and, and to me, that's been most amazing because most of the people in the tech, you know, the tech industry are in it. You know, I wouldn't say all for the money, but the money's there. It's good money. Yeah. Well, I, I think there, there's a slight there's a slight fallacy in that. They would like to get paid. <laughs> a little, a little bit. I mean, I, I think this is a, it's a very important point. If, if you look at the new stuff, and the new stuff that's here is like the sound card for classic, finally, finally, good job. Yes. It's difficult, but it's a long road, go here now. The X5000, similar situation. The, the A2222 coming. Uh, there are new things, one, two, 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 that, uh, <laughs> A1222, <laughs> hey. Amiga 1, 1222, 12, 12, <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make is we have to spend money, like, you have to ask yourself, how can I spend 20 bucks on the Amiga this month, and if you do not do that, we will not be here when that stops, when that stops, we're done, it's over, we'll look like an Atari, we'll look like an Ooh. acorn, yeah, but when I came in in 2009, for the most part, other than a couple of SAMs, there wasn't much you could buy. All the software that you could buy dated back to the beginning of either the end of the 68K era or the very beginning of the PowerPC era. There wasn't much to buy. What's really fantastic and what demonstrates that health is slowly, at least potentially, returning to the Amiga market is that now there is commercial software to buy. There are new games that are commercial, there's new utility packages that are commercial, there's video that's coming, the hardware is commercial. Uh, Sketchbox. Yeah, yeah, Sketchbox. Sketchbox is fantastic. So, um, and not to, and, and personal paint's cool too, but Sketchblock, I and mean, I've got children who, uh, I can't understand my wife's iPad, and my, you know, my, my, my eight-year-old figured it out in seconds, right? Got to that point in my life. Anyway, but they have, they have access to, to it. Yeah, they have access to, we've got some really, really high-powered PCs at the house, right? So could they use that for all their stuff? Of course they could. Do they? No, they'd much rather use Sketchblock and a Wacom tablet on Tati's Amiga. And my son can play any game that he likes with immense graphics, but what, he, what is his favorite is Mace. From the Adam Clark specs, he loves that thing. So uh, it's really awesome that there's commercial development back that shows that health is slowly but surely uh, returning here a little bit. We have to keep up the momentum. Yeah, my, my son is totally going to have an Amiga when he grows up. No Flash. No HTML5. I mean, like, he might not even get to YouTube at that point. He's kind of young. It's, it's like a safe car. It's a safe computer. Although <laughs> well, YouTube works very well on my Xbox. It's much more for YouTube, doesn't it? Not, not it you know, it gave us a little trouble today, which is very strange. It oh, usually it froze. Yeah, it froze, but it's very strange. That could be the... Uh, I don't know. I what think it's the air conditioning in here. Something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It works pretty. It works pretty well on the Xbox. I mean, yeah, yeah okay. Yes, you can pick up a phone for three dollars and it'll play YouTube. That's not cool, man. That's easy. Playing YouTube on an obscure operating system using an embedded process that was meant for a route. That. <laughs> <laughs> How hard can we make this? Exactly. <laughs> well, there's even an enhancer pack. There is. Available. That's pretty good. Cool yeah. yeah, I just had to get that in. Where are you, Matthew? Yeah, there you go. Uh, so. Uh, it, and, and there are people doing good things. You know, one of the things I've often thought about was, you know, if every person in the Amiga community spent that 20 bucks that you're talking about, mm -hmm. you know, sending, you know, if you know, how many people would, would we estimate there are worldwide that are active users? Estimate. He knows how many of those four there are. He shouldn't. He shouldn't speak. <laughs> he, he does all the when he put in your registration key. He goes to his email. So he actually knows. So, <laughs> so are there 10,000 people? 
Why is it a secret? Why is this a secret? It's not it's a secret. It's it's an unmeasurable question and we might not like the truth. So I like the that was it. Well as so long as it's self sustaining, I don't really care how it is. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But let's say if everybody in the community say you a dollar every month. Just for awesome. your wouldn't that be <laughs> 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 To Thomas's point too, it's like how are we going to measure? Like, do, do we count like the people who are running OS four? Like I have this imagination of like a monthly. How do I say this? It's like monthly Amiga user. user. No, no, monthly Amiga user. How many people touch an Amiga every month? As a metric, yeah. like not that they have one in the corner, but they actually boot one up and touch it once a month. That's that's a good number in my mind. But then you start have to grow the community. Like, th there's a lot of Amiga OS4 focus in this room because we show up. And having done years and years and years of outreach, looking at Amiga Dave, we try. Like, so if you're not going to participate, don't knock it because we're here. Those doors are open. If you want to come in and pay the money to get a table to show off Aeros or Morph West, which Amiga Dave has done a lot of times. Thomas is here. You know, please, please come. Let's have a debate about which one of these is better. Let's spend our money and, and pick well, one. Let's not have a debate. You have to buy two, one of each. Because <laughs> you have to compare them. But the point I'm trying to make is the community is, is very vibrant. We, we get into these, uh, well, these foul language, but we get into these discussions and bickering like on the forums, I don't know who those people are. But the point I'm trying to make is they're still, at the end of the day, um, distance a little bit, but they're, they're using Amigas. So, like, we're here for the same thing. But you ask me, you know, what's the size of the community? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I guess you're thinking about the next generation community. But the classic community is huge. Yes, yes. Classic. oh yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, I, think, uh, I think we need to cover them both. Yes. And I think it's important that we, we, we integrate them and bring them off. Because, uh, and that's why anything we, we do now, for OS4, we make sure we have the similar, uh, uh, if we can, for uh, OS3. It's a lot of work to do that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that's one of, uh, that's Matthew's baby, he's really worked hard on it. So, uh, we're going to make sure we keep what Matthew's doing. What's right. awesome about mm -hmm. that also is that there's a conjunction here where you guys are starting to ramp up OS3 software, mm -hmm. and we're also starting to get really good accelerators. Exactly. Together. So, the old Vampire, it's, it's come together. That thing is fantastic. Anybody seen the Vampire Tiller on oh, the 500? It's, it's brilliant. That thing is amazing. And pretty soon it'll have access to the same, most of the same commercial software yeah. that we already have on the next gen side. So yeah. that's fine. So, so let, let's let's do a little review, right? It's uh, 2016. I, I wish at the end of the statement it actually was 2011. It's 2016. So <laughs> I got more <laughs> Next year, if we get lucky, a little bit of luck, we'll have two different flavors of Amiga OS 4 based. Possibly Morphwest runs on them as well. Systems in the market that have parts that can be procured and put on motherboards and shipped. Like, the problem with the X1000 is the chip went away because the stupid Apple bought them. So, you have that. Then we have the, the work the vampire guys are doing. Sam here showing up? No. He, he took off. I mean, it's cool. I mean, you just, it, that and an Amiga 600? Oh my god. Because uh, you can take it to work with a laptop. Yeah, so we'll bust it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but the point I'm trying to make is, if Jens can get Amiga Reborn done, and of all the people on the planet, I, I hope Jens can, like he is a guy who can do this. The new 1200. Yeah. So you have a new 1200 and he left the processor slot open. And there's competition for dollars <laughs> to put in the, in the new cases in a new injection mold that comes through from Kickstarter. So it is technically possible, if we get lucky in 2017, that you'll be able to source and part and build your own Amiga 1200 with a re-implemented motherboard, a re-implemented case, and a choice of processors that include actual 68030s with the gold thing on the top, or an FPGA based thing. I mean, it's, it's insane. And it's, commercial software. And, and, and some commercial, commercial software, software. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. And, and a lot of free stuff will still run on those quite nicely. Maybe not with the chip RAM enhancement button turned on. But then you also have the NG stuff moving forward as well. I mean, oh my gosh. I mean, how many times did we talk about, will there be an Amiga for sale at AmiWest? How many times did I complain to you? <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Alan bought the first <laughs> Amiga, uh, uh, sorry, the Cyrus Amiga 1X5000 motherboard at Amy West today. First one. All right. <laughs> it, 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 
couldn't do that last year. You couldn't do that the year before. I could go a long time saying that. And we're finally there. Like, my brother got me into the Amiga. He does other stuff. He has an AIX machine in his office. I mean, because, he, he, I mean, anyway, he would buy it. I have lots of friends who would be interested. The, the X5000 is a little too much to bite off. It's a little too expensive. The Tabor, if we get the software right, get all the stuff around it, I know three or four people that might buy one of those because they just have that kind of money. They, they, it's like I can buy this or an iPad, I already got a stack of iPads, I might as well buy this. It's like right on the cusp of that. Yeah. See, I, I have a similar experience. I have at least five or ten people who would seem to be, they've seen money and they seem to use it. They seem to heard me talk about it. They said, well, where can I get one? And uh, that's, the, you know, that's the thing I think is part of our next step, is making them available in quantity so that people can actually buy one. Uh, and uh, you know, there's, there's different business models that occur between you know, here and there. But uh, I, I think that's one of the things that will really help us you know, extend the community and also ex extend the viability of the platform. But one of the things I like about it is that we're still having backwards compatibility you know, for all of our software and all but of our... The, the key message is brainwash kids. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and your grandchildren. Yeah. And, and, your, grandchildren. and your grandchildren, if you have them. Yes. I, I tell my son, do you want to play monsters or drive cars? Skid marks or rampage? <laughs> He's got the Amiga joystick, the little one, fits in his hand. He hasn't quite figured it all out yet, but he loves watching it. Oh, exactly. I mean, we talk about the classic community, and it is much bigger, but the reality is, thanks to folks like Paul who are actually, and, and Tony and all the other guys, and Luca, the, the master of cleaning old systems, um, it, it is a loving, caring operation to keep these things running. And amazingly, that's, that's not our only option. Right. I mean, I, we could fire up the OS 3.9 emulator on the X5000. Runs great. I can run Vista Pro now again. I can't even do that on my OS 60 base 4000. Right. It, it's a little tricked out, but it, it wouldn't run on crash. But it runs on the X5000. So I can do the scenery stuff. And it was like, you know, just what, what is that um, movie, Ratatouille, when the, the guy eats the, the, the guy at the end, the critic eats the food? Yeah. And they're like his. His world changes, and he becomes like the little kid in front of his mom's kitchen, and it's like, you know, that first bite of the ratatouille that his mom used to make. It was like, oh my god, I'm back home again. <laughs> but here's this Vista yeah. Pro. It's all like blocky, but it was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I, I just have to say that uh, we've been talking about OS 3 and OS 4 this whole time, but I'd just like to point out, for those of you who are just in the X5000, that more OS does will shortly run on the X5000, and uh, I expect it to be a screener. So I'm okay. looking forward to that as well. Yeah, we have all kinds of choices and all kinds of enthusiasm. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, and uh, I, I'm hoping that, you know, for those of us who are here, obviously it's, it's kind of like, you know, uh, expressing enthusiasm to people who are already enthusiastic. But I, I think that as we, as we reach out in the future, uh, that we'll be able to remember some of this and remember some of these reasons why it's so fun. So thank you for your contributions. We really appreciate it. We also, yeah, <laughs> Uh, tonight we have one additional part here to our entertainment, and, uh, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Soli was involved in kickstarting a movie uh, called From uh, Bedrooms to Billionaires, right? I'll, I'll do the spiel. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just before we do that, we paid for it. Yes, yes. This, this. Do we want to do the Eric Schwartz animation? Well, of course. Yes. That was the next piece. Yes. So, you know, we're, so we'll have a little, a, a little feature while the big feature is getting ready. Uh, so uh, we have an animation by Eric Schwartz, uh, and uh, I don't know a thing about that, but it should be fine. Yeah, so um, at, the, uh, at the Amiga 30th, Eric Schwartz wanted to do something special for the, the birthday, um, the 30th anniversary of the Amiga, and he put together a, a video, an animation for us, but he didn't finish it. And uh, if you go look at his website, he's actually had some fairly... Uh, He's had a rough year, and um, he emailed me last week to say that he, he finally got the, uh, the video finished and sent it to me. So the first part is going to look very similar from the from those are at the 30th, um, but this is the, the final uh, product. <laughs> <laughs>